the Sub 3 Marathon, an aspirational goal for many thousands of keen runners around the world. And I was fortunate enough in a period of time between 2002 and 2012 to run 15 Sub 3 Marathons with a best time of 2.42 and 10 seconds. However, in the past decade, I've only run a handful of marathons, all of them for fun, and all of them in the range between three hours 30 and four hours. And for much of those 10 years, I've battled with persistent injury and times out of running. But now, fingers crossed, I've got over those injuries and I've had a consistent period of six months training where I've not missed a day and managed to average over 50 miles a week. So I'm beginning to wonder how fast can I run a marathon at the age of 54 next year and can I get back under that magic sub three barrier? So in this video, I'm going to go through five things I think are counting against me and being able to run a sub three marathon in the next 18 months before my 55th birthday. But despair not because for each of those problems, I think I found a solution, which means I'm in with a chance of running a sub three marathon at the age of 54 within the next 18 months. So the first thing that counts against me in trying to achieve a sub three marathon at the age of 54 is that I was never that good a runner historically over the marathon distance. So what do I mean by that? Well, despite those 15 sub three hour marathons, I achieved my best time of two hours, 42 minutes and 10 seconds at the age of 34. And that sounds all well and good, but when you put a two hour, 42 minute and 10 second marathon by a 34 year old, into the WAVA age grading calculator, it gives an age grading of 76.02%, which then predicts for a 54 year old runner, a marathon time of 3.06. So a little bit out from that 2.59 that I'm aiming for. And even if we were to plug my best ever age graded performance on the marathon, which was a 2.45.50 at the London Marathon of 2011, when I was 41 years old, I still only get an equivalent time age 54 for three hours and five minutes. In fact, if we are to reverse that exercise and put in a two hour, 59 minute and 59 second marathon for a 54 year old and see what the equivalent for a senior age runner would be, we get two hours, 35 minutes and 41 seconds or about six and a half minutes quicker than I ever managed a marathon when I was running at my best. So the first issue I have when trying to run a sub three marathon age 54 is my own running history and the mathematics applying to it. So should I just throw my hands up in despair thinking this thing cannot be done? Of course not. I had a quick look on the um, power of 10 at the marathon rankings for last year, 2022, obviously the last complete year we have statistics for. And I found that 208 male runners in the VET 50 category achieved a sub three marathon. 86 in the VET 55 category got that mark. 11 VET 60s and incredibly two VET 65s. So all over 300 runners over the age of 50 in the UK achieved a sub three marathon last year. So in order to find out a bit more about what it takes to run a sub three marathon as a 50 year old runner or older, I went to the sub three marathon Facebook page as there are many veteran runners on there dishing out good advice, tips and running insights. And this is the feedback I got. So one guy has responded as cut down his running to four times a week and does a lot more elliptical and bike and cross training. Someone else has upped his mileage and made it much more specific to the demands of the marathon. So here we have Tim Gross, a very well renowned and respected voice in the running world and has a fantastic YouTube channel. Please go and check that out if you haven't already. He admits that he can no longer run the mileage he used to as a young man, something I'll come on to later. He also likes to focus more on marathon pace sessions and not going totally to the well on faster speed work. And as many of you may know, Tim ran a fantastic 2.59 marathon at Seville earlier this year at the age of 56. So here we have another contribution advising me to focus on strength and conditioning, something I'll come on to later. And another runner here who very much focuses on the faster end of longer runs and running lots of good 10 mile blocks at marathon effort. Here we have a suggestion to train across all paces, but make sure I take a lot of recovery and do less volume than I was when I was younger. 
Another good bit of advice here is to get my 10k and half marathon times in line so they would predict a sub 3 marathon as I scale up. Reminder here that weight is important and also to look at the supplements that are needed as we enter our older years. Here we have somebody who amazingly ran a sub 3 marathon, age 73. Emphasis here on tempo work around marathon pace and apparently it should be a breeze for somebody of my background so thanks for the vote of confidence there. I certainly hope so. And here the message is reiterated not to neglect that running at 5k pace to maintain a good VO2 max as well as threshold and long running. So, And the emphasis from this respondent on weight loss and frequency and running consistent mileage. And my friend Charlie here has a slightly different approach. He puts all his eggs in that long run basket, making sure he does plenty of them in training. And for his last London Marathon campaign, actually did five days of running the marathon distance or over. It works for him and he's at recovery in the week, but it's still food for thought. And finally, and something I'll come on to later, the importance of strength, conditioning and mobility work. So thank you to all those uh, contributors from the Sub3 Facebook group and now on to how I can apply them to my own personal situation. But... So the second thing that counts against me in being able to achieve a Sub3 marathon at the age of 54 is having to work full time. Now that's not a poor me comment, it's just stating a fact that in the day we're often out of bed before 6 o'clock if we want to get a double run in out the house at quarter past seven every day not getting home till five o'clock so once we've done our evening run luckily in some nice sunshine today that's minimal time to do all those other things that I would do if I were a full-time athlete or did not have to work very much in the day all the foam rollering self-massage mobility sessions and the like even those afternoon naps not possible when you're at work because they probably wouldn't like it so, how are you going to get around that one then, John? Finding the time around your work commitments? I think it helps that I'm a very schedule-driven person. If I put something on a list and allocate a time on that list for it to be done, I tend to do it. So one thing in my favour in going for that sub-3 marathon is the ability to organise my time to make sure as much of those extras can get done as possible. For example, I can take a massage gun in the car and if I have a few minutes between meetings or lunchtime I can massage gun my legs then killing two birds with one stone so essentially I take the opportunities to do what I can where I can when I can to get those extra bits and pieces done <laughs> but it's pausing this exposition I never noticed those steps up there <laughs> the world's most useless steps <laughs> and the third thing work against me getting a sub 3 marathon is the fact my job is very sedentary I can spend some days up to 6 hours driving to meetings driving between meetings sitting in meetings and that obviously deactivates the glutes gives you tight hip flexors and then leads on to several injuries which has largely been the story of the past decade of my running so back in the years when I was rolling out those sub 3 marathons um, I had a fairly active job. I was a teacher in a classroom, standing at the front, teaching, because that's what you do. Um, moving, moving around different desks in the classroom, walking on corridors, fetching books, etc. So my day was fairly active and I didn't have a very long commute to the places I worked in. As I said now, I have lots of commuting and lots of sedentary brain work and less active work. So this has been an issue for you in the past, so what's the solution now? Well, funnily enough, it's strength, conditioning and mobility, something that when I was running those sub-3 marathons, I thought I could disregard, you know. How did you get faster at running? I thought the answer was more running. How do you get even faster? Even more running. And I totally neglected, really, strength, conditioning and mobility. Yes. Apart from a few circuit sessions run by my running club then, I really didn't do very much at all. Whereas now, after this succession of injuries, I've really cottoned on to the fact strength and conditioning. I saw a strength and conditioning coach, got a proper program, proper schedule to follow. I've got mobility workouts I do most evenings in the week. So having a sedentary job isn't going to hold me back from getting that sub-3 marathon because I'm going to get even better at strength, conditioning and mobility. So the fourth thing counting against me running a sub-3 marathon now is trying to replicate the training that I used to do. I can't. 
Um, when I was at my best, I was running regular 85 to 90 mile weeks, sometimes touching 100 mile weeks. I just know now, even with all the strength, conditioning and mobility in the world I just mentioned, my body wouldn't stand up to it and I frankly don't have the time around the job I have now. And the solution is? Well, in the words of the song, I'm going to change my way of thinking, <laughs> get myself a different set of rules. 85 miles a week when I was running well would have been between 10 and 11 hours a week of running because my average pace was around 7.30 minute miling. Now, I can still do between 10 and 11 hours of exercise a week. So we could be looking at eight hours of running and maybe two or three hours of perhaps a watt bike or certainly that strength and conditioning that I was talking about earlier. I can still do the same amount of training as I did in my mid thirties and early forties. It will just look differently to fit my circumstances and my running profile at the stage I'm at in my own running journey now. And the fifth and final thing that's counted against me is I don't have that base of fitness that I had for most of those 11 years where I was running sub threes. There was a point at any time we could have decided to enter a marathon at about four weeks notice and I would be in sub three shape. It was just a case of doing some sharpening. Whereas now after that decade of persistent injury, I'm having to come from a much lower base. So I'm doing a marathon in a couple of weeks time, the Yorkshire marathon and I know I'm nowhere near sub three shape. I'd be happy with something around 3.15. So one thing counting against me is I don't have those layers upon layers of marathon blocks and other good training blocks that you need if you're gonna run a very good and challenging marathon time. Yeah, so in my experience, I think it takes around 18 months to get yourself back in shape when you've had a period of not building those marathon blocks. Uh, I was in a similar situation to John a few years ago and I had to do several sort of blocks of marathon training and eventually I felt in shape to actually do one to the best of my ability. So currently you're not marathon fit? No, but what I am going to do and the solution to not being marathon fit is to think in the medium term, playing the medium to long game. I'm now 53 and a half years old, got a marathon in a couple of weeks like I said, but I am looking towards the Manchester Marathon in April of 2024, when I will be 54, and then an autumn marathon in 2024, I'll be 54 and a half, a bit like Adrian Mollis, isn't it? Um, and I'm really looking to be in sub three shape, if not by next spring, certainly by next autumn. And I know that will take this current block of marathon training I'm in, another block in the winter and spring of 2024, and possibly another block through the summer of 2024, really until I can hope to be shooting for that sub three marathon. Exciting. So what you're saying, John, is run lots and don't get injured. So yeah, so they spent 10 minutes telling you what Dawn said in five words. But thanks for watching anyway. <laughs> if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you want to see my continuing journey through to the Yorkshire Marathon and beyond, and hopefully somewhere around three hours, then please consider subscribing to the channel. We both talk about our own training and post regular races, park run, coaching, and other general running updates. So until next time, keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on.